In this video, we're going to take a look at Little Man Computer for GCSE Computer Science. So what do I mean by LMC and what do I mean by assembly language? So LMC stands for Little Man Computer, which is a simulation of how the CPU works. As you'll see when I show you later on, it is a little bit like a little man running around and processing our instructions inside a CPU. Assembly language is a low-level programming language which is built for processors to understand. It's a lot different to a high-level language such as VB or Python and it's an easier way to show and demonstrate machine code in a CPU. Now, what I mean by built for processors to understand is, is what's called hardware specific. So depending on your CPU, it'll have a different assembly language. That's why um, we program in a high level language, because you imagine that you had to write a different program for every single CPU that existed, that would take forever. Whereas a high level language, such as VB or Python, we write the programming code once, and then it gets, when you install it and compile it and whatnot, it gets converted into assembly or machine code. So we're gonna be looking at the LMC emulator, which is on peterhiginson.co.uk slash LMC. So no credit, I didn't create this, but it's a very good tool for practicing LMC. Now he has also got a bit more of a difficult or more technical one, which is more useful for A-level as well. So here's an example of how we use the LMC emulator. So you can see I've got these little slots on the side. So all your instructions go inside slot zero, so that's the first instruction. And then you see it converts, you've got your slots and you've got your machine code. So you've got your address there and you've got your um, slots essentially. So this program enters the number as an input and stores it in the memory address of 99. So input and then technically instruction number two, but instruction zero one. So the STA which is store into memory slot 99 and you see it's converted into the machine code there of 3994 store in slot 99. So a bit of a recap, RAM or DRAM is random access memory and it stores the data for current running programs. It loses all data when the computer turns off because it is volatile. But RAM essentially has lots of spaces or lots of slots to store your data and instructions so the CPU can use them. So here we've got the code window here, we've got the output tray, the input tray, the CPU itself, and these little boxes are called mailboxes, which are slots in RAM. Then in the CPU, you've got the program counter, which keeps track of the next mailbox to get the instruction from. You've got the instruction register, address register, and accumulator. Now in the last video, we spoke about the memory data register and things like that. This one doesn't have them broken down, you just got the essentially the address register, so like the MAR there, and then we've got the, instead of an MDR, we've got the instruction register. So this stores the code for the instructions, so for star, it'd be three, and say if it was storing in slot 54, it'd be three, and the address would be 54. And the accumulator just stores the last sum the computer has done. So it's not quite as detailed as um, what I spoke about in the previous video, where I was talking about all the different uh, registers, but still, it's enough to get an understanding of what's going on. So these little slots are called mailboxes, and it's a fancy way of saying a slot in RAM. Now, each one of these in the LMC is a space to put in a three digit code. So if I had, for example, the code 398, it's a store is number three. So the machine code for store in this uh, emulator is three. And then 98 is mailbox 98. So what we've got here is the instructions, or some instructions, how it's written, and what the machine code is. So storing, we like to type STA, and it'll be three something. Add, it's just add, and it's one something, so 199 would be add what's in the accumulator to whatever is in 99. Sub is two, input is 901, output is 902, and end of the instruction is zero. So the first command we're going to look at is INP, which stands for input, obviously. Now just like in Python, if you've programmed in Python, it allows us to enter in a number. Next command is APT, which stands for output. 
So just like printing Python, it allows us to send information to the user. In this case, instead of popping up with a box or something, we've got this little output tray. So this one, I had nothing programmed, so I just typed it out and it stored, uh, sorry, it took what was everything in the, in the accumulator, which was nothing, and outputted it, so it outputted zero. Then we've got STA, which stands for store. So just like a variable in Python, RBB, it stores the data into a specific memory location. So if you are doing this as you go along, which I highly recommend, if you just type in STA99, it's just gonna put nothing, so what was in the accumulator, which would be nothing, into 99, so it's not gonna change. You're much better off typing INP, then store 99, and whatever number you type in will appear in the 99th mailbox. But that is a way of storing information. Now, LDA stands for load, and it's exactly the opposite of STA. So this one, it'll take the data out of the mailbox and put it in the accumulator. So it's really important if you are programming in an assembly language that if you've got something you want to keep and it's in the accumulator, you need to store it before you load something else, otherwise it will get rid of it. So this program, it takes a number, stores it in slot 65, it then gets another number, input it, and then overwrites the old number with the previous number. Okay, so essentially this just inputs one number because it gets rid of the second one. So it overwrites it. We've then got add, which stands for add. Don't really get any points for uh, guessing that one. So just like using plus in Python, it allows us to add two numbers together. So again, if you're practicing, don't just type add, you won't do anything. So you see here I've got input, I'm going to store it in slot 99. I'm going to input, store it in slot 98 and then add that to 99, and what it'll do is if I inputted 10 there, and I inputted five there, it'd have five inside the accumulator, and it'd go get the 10 and add it to the five to make 15. Sub, just like add, is for subtract. It allows us to subtract two numbers from each other. So this one's a little bit, well, it's not difficult, but it's a little bit different. So again, I've put a number, so we're gonna say again that I've, been, I've added in 10 and then I'm going to type in 5 so we've got 10 and 5 so it starts out in slot 99 and then input 5 and if I sub 99 it will do 5 take away 10 so that would be minus 5 so if you wanted it to be 10 take away 5 you'd have to store this one you'd have to load 99 back and then subtract 98 or whatever you store the other number from 99 so it takes the last number you typed in or last number you loaded and then takes the number from the mailbox away from that number. Now, one thing to help you out is you don't need to be able to, for IGCC, you don't need to be able to write these programs necessarily. If you do the EDUCAST specification, you do need to be able to write programs on this. Basic ones, but you need to be able to understand them. But it's a really good understanding of how a computer works if you can understand how assembly language gets the expected outputs that you, you've typed in. So what I suggest you do is pause this video and use the emulator to create a program that inputs a number, then stores a number, inputs a second number, stores that number, inputs a third number, stores a number, and then adds all three numbers, and outputs the result. Now what I want to do is I want to demonstrate how I'll go about doing that task. So I've asked you to create a program that adds up three numbers. So first things first, I'm going to imp, I need, to imp, I need to imp three numbers, so I'll type that in first. Now I'm going to start one in slot 99. I'm going to start one in 98. Just like that, nice and easy. So I've inputted a number, stored it. Input another number, stored it. Now I'm inputting a third number, now I'm not going to store it. Now that's because I don't need to at this point, because it's going to be in the accumulator. If I run this program, so you see these little circles, what these are, is these are our various buses. So the you see the um, address bus goes and gets the address and pops that, um, pops that in. You can see the program counter then increments by going to the ALU. And the instruction register gets the 9, pops that in there, and the 0, 1 for the address register. Which I found quite confusing in this emulator because the instructions from zero but it's just because the instruction is called 901 in the more advanced simulator it makes a little bit more sense so i'm going to type in my first number which is 10. you see it pops out into the accumulator and you see my buses are going to get 
uh, going to fetch from RAM. So you see it's that fetch decode execute cycle, it fetches it. Then this stage here, it decodes it and then it executes and carries out. So my 10 is now in the mailbox 99. Program count is now in, uh, incremented and then it's going to fetch the next instruction, which is a 901, which wants me to add 20. So it adds that to the accumulator. It then increments the program counter, the address bus and, the, and uh, instruction buses go and um, so the address bus, sorry, the data bus, sorry, go and add them to the instruction register and the address register. See, now I've got 10 in there and 20 in there, my two mailboxes, and now it's going to ask me to add a third number, so let's say it's five. But you'll see that five is in the accumulator already, so what I don't have to do is load the other numbers or anything like that. And then it goes and gets the next instruction, which at the minute is a halt, so it puts in zero there and the program has halted. So what I need to do now is add some more code. So now I'm gonna add what was in slot 99, then add what was in slot 99 to 98. Okay, so now I've got, I'll have the five from last time, plus the 10, plus the 20, and then I'm gonna output that at the end, and then halt the command. So if I run that again, speed up a little bit. Input number, so I'm gonna have 10 again, so 10. 20, 5, and you see in the human we've got 35 and it's outputted 35. So that is our program completed. Now hopefully you've had a go at that. I'm gonna go through the answers. So there are multiple ways you could do this, but as long as it's on the right lines, you'd be absolutely fine. So if you run your code, it should add up three numbers. But we've got input, then store it somewhere. Input again, store it somewhere else. Input the third number, then add that to the first, and add the two you just added together to 98. You don't have to start or load any of the ones, and then I've output it at the end. Now, one thing I should have added at the end is a HLT, but quite often I don't bother, and that's probably lazy on my part, but that's because an empty mailbox has zero in anywhere, so it will just stop anywhere. But that is probably lazy on my part. In fact, it is lazy. Now, Without really knowing this, you've all done this command before. Zero, zero just stops the program. All your remaining RAM slots are zero, zero, so the program will just automatically halt. Now, the reason I've written n slash halt is because you won't really say I'm going to halt the program, you say I'm going to stop or end the program, but the actual code you need to write is HLT. But it just stops the program where it is, so it just reads zero, zero. The next command we're going to look at is DAT, which stands for data location, and it's a little bit like a variable in programming in Python or Visual Basic. And what this does is it saves the data you want into the corresponding slot to your code line number. So what I mean by that is, you see this bottom line here. So a value is the name of the variable I want. So I'm going to call it value, uh, variable, uh, value, sorry. And then I'm going to type DAT, and then I'm going to say what I want to put in that variable. So when you might write in programming, um, value equals 50, we just put value dat 50, okay? Now you don't have to put a value if you want to input a value into that. You could say um, input and then store sta value. So what this one's going to do is it's going to output zero, it then load the 50 and then output the 50 again. Okay, so it's, if you take that code in, it's a bit of a demonstration of how uh, data location works, how that works. Now where it starts getting a little bit more complicated is when we look at branching. Now branching is the most basic form of selection and works very similar to an if statement. So in branching we label particular instructions and skip them under specific conditions. We can also use it to loop our programs. So in LMC, the condition we look is what's evident the accumulator at that point. So the first one's nice and easy, just branch always. And what this does is it changes the program counter to a different location. So instead of going 0, 1, 2, 3, what I could do is I could make it so it goes 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and just keep looping forever, inputting numbers. It's a little bit like a go to in some programming language, which is not a command you should be getting used to using. But in like early languages like basic, you can just do go to line three and it'll just skip, essentially the code. 
We've then got BRZ, which stands for Branch While Zero. Now what this does is it changes the program air counter to the address specified if that accumulator is currently zero. So you see here I've got I'm inputting numbers and then I'm taking them away from each other. Now this program will loop if two numbers subtracted from each other become zero. So if I typed in five take away five, so five and five, it would keep looping asking me for more numbers. If I typed in ten take away five, it would not loop because the accumulator would be, in this case, five. So it would not loop. However, if we've got, also got branch while zero or positive, which is BRP, and what this does is exactly the same, but if it's zero or positive. So in this case now, with the same exact program, if I type in 10 take away five, it will loop, and five take away five will loop. However, if I typed in 10 take away 20, it would not loop, because it'd be a negative number. Now hopefully you understood that and it made sense. What I would definitely recommend doing is re-watching the video and practicing the code as you go along if you haven't and just make some programs. There's some example ones on the website anyway. But just do a little calculators or you know just adding up some numbers, maybe have it so it um, prints out a sequence of numbers, see if you can um, work out how you might do multiplication. That'd be quite difficult, but something you could try. But just make sure you are practicing and make sure you're looking at how the various buses are moving around. But hopefully that was quite useful and I'll see you in the next video.